What is up, YouTube? What's up, everyone? I hope everyone has been doing awesome. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, apologies, guys. Life, holidays. Just life has been life. But I've got a lot of news to tell you guys. And some of it not so good and some of it very, very good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'll begin with the first one. Uh, the drop tails are no more. The colony still exists. Um, I have given it to a subscriber. Um, what did happen, went away for a couple of, um, a couple of days uh, on holiday uh, last month in January. And um, basically when I came back, they had escaped and there was a whole trail leading out. So you guys will remember the enclosure was here. You see this, I'll get to that later. The enclosure was here and basically in the front of it, they uh, climbed over and uh, it basically formed a whole line going all the way down, down like this and all the way around out of my garage. So by rough estimation, I lost about 80% of the workers. Um, so what some of you are wondering now, was the queen still there? Uh, my, get, my estimation is yes, because I did have the colony for the next three weeks or so, and there was still egg production. So that means that the, the queen was still within the nest. Problem, they still try to escape more, so then I tried a new way of, um, instead of baby powder, because you see the thing is, with glass, as you'll see over here, with glass is a problem of uh, the silicone being on the inside. And this is something that all of you should actually make sure of if you ever build your um, uh, uh, enclosures. Let me show this one. If I can get it to focus, because it's focusing on a, it's a bit blurry, but you'll see the silicone on the inside here. So now the drop tail basically climbed against the silicone and they managed to actually overcome the baby powder barrier. Now how I fixed that was I had taken a little um, menorah blade and had basically cut the silicone out from inside and then I put oil on it. So the oil basically also acts as a barrier. Normal cooking oil, sunflower oil, olive oil, um, they both all work very well. I've been heard, heard rumored that it works quite well, tested on the drop tiles for over a week no escapees. So then some other news happened and a queen that I had been waiting for since I started scan keeping. No, not for Vipilosis, that's still coming. Um, it's a dream species for a lot of ant keepers because of how rare they are, because of how unique they are, because of how they build their nests. Yeah, that, that, that's the queen over there. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll showcase her now. Um, basically gave the drop tails, getting back to the drop tails, gave the drop tails back to a subscriber, asked if he wanted it. He said yes, he will gladly take it. So let's all give him some good luck. I think he's going to need feeding drop tails. If any of you have known drop tails, you know that they will eat you if you don't feed them. But anyway, um, I just want to show you guys about how the colonies are doing. Outside of the Meronopolis, they are loving this enclosure so far. You guys have noticed I changed the plant. That other one died. I actually think I've, it, it started dying, so I don't think it worked pretty well. This was the original plant that I actually wanted to get. If you guys can remember what I spoke about. So it looks like a desert rose type of thing. It's a succulent and doesn't need a lot of care. Um, but yeah, the Marinopolis are doing extremely well. Uh, very active. Gave them a roach last night. They're still busy chowing it. Get some nice shots there. They are doing extremely better in this setup than the previous one, if you guys can remember. Um, guys, one of my favorite colonies, just because of how easy they are. Some, some honey over there, if you guys... Just how easy they are 
to care for there's no escapees this little small enclosure that i think is a 20 by 20 20 uh, 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters wide and then 20 centimeters high so it's a little box um loving them then we'll get to the Campanotus maculatus guys <laughs> yeah i'm still doing extremely well a lot of egg production very very busy yeah i'm gonna have to plan an outworld or something for them or a different enclosure because first of all outworld too small um there's not a lot of workers right now in the outworld but a lot of the times it's about triple the amount so a lot of them are inside the nest now and as you can see it's pretty full up in there now if you remember this was the original nest and this was the new extension that I put on. So they're doing very well. Very well. They are now eating almost anything I give to them. Be it cooked chicken, roaches, chips, uh, honey, which they are devouring. Sugar ants, you would think. Guys, also on other news. Our missile have super majors. Yeah, is one super major. Um, I'm trying to find with other ladies. She's about a little bit bigger than that one that's over here. I'm trying to see maybe if I just move the nest or I get them a bit scared and we might see some movement. I've got a feeling that's her in the entrance there. See, there's the one. There's another smaller major, but that's not what we will refer to as super major. The super major I'm talking about is almost the same size as the queen which is pretty large. You'll see that that must be another major larva that that major is busy carrying. Seed eaters, again, guys, the meso colony has been wonderful. I've not had any pain with them. Um, every now and again, I feed them a roach, but they are con very content with their, with their um, seeds. You'll see that they've stored there. They're storing some there, over there. Guys, I've been a mixture from budgie seeds to grass seeds to, I'm not sure what other seeds it is, but Andrea sent me from Ann South Africa. So he's got a lot of seeds um, available as well that you can take. Don't know what that major is doing. Let me try and pack them one more time. Yeah, they, I don't want to bother them too much. Then, I'm going to have to turn this colony like this to get some light. Here Panera. Guys, these have doubled in numbers since the last video on them. And there's just more production. There's eggs on the ground over there. There's lava on the ground over there. Yeah, they're going to need a new nest. Definitely. There's more workers over there. There's more workers in the outworld. Sorry, my thumb's in the way. Gave them a nice roach last night. They're still busy chowing that. Guys, I also been super, super colony of the channel. Um, Andrew was very kind enough to give me his best egg laying production um, queen when she was still in founding. And this is the result. Now, for you, some of you that have, can't pick, make out. So we've got, over here, we've got eggs that's freshly laid all right we've got eggs that are freshly laid then we've got lava that's lava high oh that's over here okay and then the final stage is cocoons so now if you guys remember the video the, from this stage the lava they use their silk to spin their cocoons that is why we introduced sand so they use the sand to basically cling onto the cocoons so yeah the Campanotus centellus I've also been doing super well. Funny enough, one of the most quiet species that I do have, yet drop tails had invaded because I keep this this little bit open because otherwise it gets a bit too humid. So drop tails had invaded here, and I actually have some drop tails for you guys to see. There's the remains of the drop tails out there, besides the ro roaches. To clean them a bit yes 
the campos had taken them out. I had seen one camper death, one Sinclair's death, among the six drop tails that were in there. So the drop tails had basically gone inside the outworld. And I was like, oh, you know, that's a problem, but this is not in the morning, on the way to work. I can't deal with this right now. It must be what it be. Come this evening, I saw one um, Sinclair's worker dead. But then there was the rest of the drop tiles were dead. So let's get to the the dream species for a lot of keepers. So enclosures 30 by 30, 30 width, 30 height, 30 length, whatever. <laughs> so glass top, ventilation. Now you'll notice, let me just Prop this over here. You'll notice there's a barrier here. So now this barrier underneath, I've put oil. So now you might be wondering, but why have I put oil and why not baby powder? This enclosure is going to be very humid. So for that reason, it can't have baby powder because the baby powder is going to get moist, and I don't think it's going to be as effective. As it is dry. So, <laughs> I'm in between two things, uh, <laughs> letting you guys guess who she is or what she is. But you know what? I've decided that because you guys haven't had a video in so long, uh, let me try to appease you guys and show you something. Now, before you guys ask me what that is, that is for something else in the future. <coughs> for the, uh, we'll see. Now, I'll put this over because she's aggressive and very great eyesight. As you can see, let me put her over here. Yes, she's open. But. That's the queen, guys. So for some of you that haven't guessed, Ucophilia longinata, if I said that correctly. Common name, weaver ant. That is her, guys. So she only has lava for now. Um, as you're wondering, what is these silken walls on the side here? So let me give you a little brief lesson. Weavers use their larvae to spin the silk. The silk is used to build structures, build walls, bind leaves that they pull together to basically glue the leaves together. I'll put up a little image right now of an example of a weaver nest out in the wild. So the queen has used the larvae to spin the walls and make her own little chamber. So originally I had cotton wool, more or less yeah, where this one, just a little bit less than this, where this wall was, and she had made her own cotton wall. So this is so that she feels more secure, probably to um, concentrate humidity more for her. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am and how nervous I am for the future because this colony requires a lot. And that is also what, what brought me to giving away the drop tails because this colony is going to require a lot of my attention, a lot of thought, a lot of effort. And I just feel that I wouldn't have the time, um, patience, effort needed to keep both colonies. So there are a few of us in South Africa right now that have weavers. Mine is more special. Okay, purely because she's all green, not half and half. Okay, she's she's committed. She's green. All right, poke poke. <laughs> anyway, guys, this is a setup. So the idea is that basically uh, she's gonna have a test tube set up until uh, a few of us have spoken that we want to more or less at about a thousand workers. Then I will introduce her to a plant, the colony. Um, but more on them in a later video. Um, I would just like to 
keep her uh, settled and then once she has workers we will basically um, start introducing the trees and whatnot so that's for another discussion eyesight she sees me from about a meter away and super aggressive that's why i put the little wax paper over her just so that she can stay more calm anyway guys i hope you enjoy that last little bit um sorry again for the late videos i hope you guys um appreciate it at least um what i will do is i will add a little snippet i had taken when the drop tails had first escaped and how they formed the trail going out and where they were um so i'll add that in um just so that you guys can see how quickly a colony can move and it's also a reason why we only keep indigenous species to the country so if there are um, mistakes like this it's not a harm to the environment there's no risk to the environment it's not an invasive species the species has been here already so that is the main reason why we only keep indigenous species guys as much as we would love other species like leafcutter ants and whatnot unfortunately that's not indigenous to our country and um, under the right circumstances a species can become invasive and be a threat to the environment so guys i hope you guys can understand that uh, this is indigenous to africa and south africa um, there's actually on the east coast there by cousin at all there are actually colonies active there so some of you that are living in that area man you are lucky uh she had a nuptial flight uh, oh you see how aggressive she is she had a nuptial flight flight about i think it was about a month ago so there might still be you might still be lucky anyway good luck guys hope you enjoyed the video videos will be coming more often and um, hopefully we've got some more colonies coming in the future so yeah maculatus is for now reigning champs on the channel they are now the biggest most hungry ferocious eaters of the channel enjoy guys cheese cheers peace